the best way of assessing is through observing how they subsequently behave and interact um, with you as the teacher and you know, clearly the standard examinations and, and so on provide a metric. So it surprises me time and again how, um, how the results from written exams seem to match in the main your gut reactions to individuals in classes. The bright ones tend to do well and the less, or the ones that are less committed or less bright tend not to do so well. So I, I don't think it's a bad measure. Okay, every class has to have an exam and every class has to have a lecture, uh, like an essay and every class, you know, like it's pretty formulaic. And what I prefer we did as, say for example, in a biology degree, would be to look at the whole program over the multiple years and go, okay, there are this particular skills we want students to get over the whole program, but they might not get each one in each class. To, to answer your question, how do you know, ultimately the way we do know these things is we test them in terms of assignments and exams. But, you know, I, I actually don't think ultimately that's the stuff that stays around for very long. We need to be flexible and not have a one-size-fits-all. If we have all the same form of assessment, if, if for our convenience everything was multiple choice, then that would disadvantage some students. So you might specialise in public speaking skills and evaluate and assess public speaking skills in one particular subject. And you might uh, evaluate and assess writing skills for a particular audience. You know, there are multiple audiences in another subject, but you obviously work it into the material that you're teaching. I do like to get the students to give a lecture, if it's only 15 minutes. I ask them to get a subject, understand it really well, enough that they can present it to their peers. And of course their peers are going to be much more sympathetic to them than me as a teacher. But in the process of swatting up the subject because they've got the pressure to convey it to their peers, they learn really well and then their peers learn really well. But I, I, there's no other... Um, there's no other better test than just seeing how people respond, um, come back to you with questions, want to follow things up, um, are interested and passionate about the ideas, want to go on and do further research. And particularly, you know, my career has been largely dedicated towards producing research scientists. Um, but my, my main criterion is can I get them to be good researchers? And thinkers and researchers in biology uh, become, pretty soon become self-evident. If the sky is the limit, I'd get them all to do little research projects, whereby uh, they've set up uh, their observations, which takes time. They've designed a series of, uh, they've come up with, if you will, a, a series of hypotheses. Then they say, ah, oh, I'll design, this is a practicing scientist would have to do anyway. Now I'll design some experiments to test that hypothesis. I'll then analyze it statistically and write it up. Are they capable? A third or four, third years would be. But again, they'd have to be, have some very close mentoring to get that. It's got to be a little, a mini project. It doesn't have to be anything that lasts more than three or four days. <laughs>